You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phone. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, Bert. Well, all right, fellas. Well, it's time. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is... Friday, everybody's been working for the weekend. Yes, sir, here it is. What you gonna do with it? All right, it is Friday. I'm glad to have you here. Michael and I both are glad to have you here, whether you are returning. You know, some people have been with us since we had our maiden broadcast in April of 2005. There's actually people in the audience that I knew before we launched CFRN way back when it was just Christian traders and we had about 2,500 members there and people acted ugly and I pulled the plug. But that's another story for another day. I'm glad you're here today, whether you're here uh, returning or for the first time. If you are a first time visitor, please fill out the guest card, you know, your name, your email address, any prayer requests. I'm kidding. That's Sunday at church. Who am I kidding? No, just simply, we're glad to have you with us, all right? We're in our second decade of broadcast history, our second decade of helping people, just like you, become traders. That's what we do. So, 
We're going to start out today by telling you that if you can't see my screen, go to the home page at cfrn.net. On the right hand side, click the big microphone, follow the instructions. You'll be registered through the end of the month. March 1st, you'll have to register again, but you'll be covered all the way through the month of March. You only register once per month, and that gives you one-click access to the show each and every day. You can also go a different route. Go to youtube.com slash cfrn slash live. Bookmark that page. You'll have one-click access every single day. Now, I just got to say that when you're out on the Internet, and it's a big place, a lot going on, a lot of moving parts, right, Michael? Would you say? Indeed, many okay. moving parts. Check this moving. Many, many. Check this moving part. Huh? Wonder who those folks are. I'm huh? gonna, I'm gonna hurry right on over there because they're not blowing smoke up my chimney. No, guys, there's no fur coat, gold tooth, or Bentley. You know, overnight. Uh, probably not ever if you have any taste, but. <clears throat> I, you know, I'm not even get wound up and go down that road. I'm so ticked off. The guy, he's so nice. I've, been, I've done two mentoring sessions with him this week. And he came into the markets to futures with no training whatsoever. And this brokerage firm got him in their crosshairs. And they let him not only open an account, but trade 10 and 15 contracts at a time. The 25 grand was blown up in account. less than a week. Less than a week. Now, why would a broker do that? Well, because they know that the majority of traders, 90%, okay, are going to blow out their account in the first year and walk away. So why put any time and energy into a person if they ain't going to be around? I'm happy to say that our broker, uh, Mr. Burton Schlichter over Daniel's Trading, uh, he and... He had a partner, a cohort. Uh, they were the dynamic duo of E-Mini Futures. I guess they still are, but she's retired now. Uh, they looked at it completely different. That's why we hit it off. They looked at things the same way Michael and I looked at it. If you take a person, whether they have experience or not, and you actually teach them how to trade, no parlor tricks, no smoke and mirrors, just teach them how markets work, teach them how to read a chart, Teach them how to show up every morning at the scene of the crime. Take note of all the clues and then solve the mystery. Also known as getting your goal for the day. All right? All right. So that's what we do and that's what we've been doing and that's what we'll continue to do. I know a lot of you may have been in our open house today and thanks for coming out. Uh, hope you enjoyed the coffee and brownies, uh, <clears throat> the digital ones. You know... Maybe you don't know, Michael, but we could probably sell digital coffee and digital donuts in the live training room every day. And if some of these other sites like the Sparmville and all this other stuff, if you know, people spend real money to buy things that aren't real, right? Do you understand? Do you know how that works? Yeah. They I... buy tractors and, oh, I need some gas for the tractor. And, oh, speaking of gas, i got to tell you about that in a minute. Uh, it's just, it's insane. So we're, we're blue collar futures traders. Futures trading is seen as a, a white collar kind of job, but we're, we're blue collar guys. We show up at the factory every day and we grind out the widgets until we meet our quota for the day. And then we take off early. Some days we go to the beach, some days the golf course, some days the track. No, I'm kidding. We don't do any of that stuff. Uh, we just live our life love our wife, you know, or, or significant other, <clears throat> and our kids, and uh, get up tomorrow, do it again. Rinse and repeat. Now, some people go, well, that's boring. Okay. <clears throat> it's either boring or the excitement comes from losing all your money. That's your, that's your choice. That, that's, what, that's what you got to choose from. Let me give you the numbers from around the world. That'll get your blood flowing. Let's just see if this rally is stuck here in the U.S. And 
Michael will be in just a second here, and he'll give us a recap of everything that happened in the live training room. I think John will be joining us later today. I got an email from Garrett. I hadn't heard from him in so long. He's got a friend, uh, sad to say, who has cancer, and, he, and, and Garrett's kind of been caring for him. So he reached out to me this morning, uh, and I told him how much we missed him. And I don't think he'll pop in today, but maybe he'll pop in next week. So here we go. These are cash markets. We'll get to the futures in, a, in just a bit. Currently, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 192 points. That's three quarters of 1%. NASDAQ is up 70 points. That's just shy of 1%. S&P 500 is up 25 points. 20. If you haven't been around the markets a long time, you, you just don't know how significant that is or, or the volatility that that speaks of. But it does. All right. And that's almost 1%. Russell 2000 is up seven points, and that's almost half of 1%. So we can safely say that everything here in the U.S. of A is green. And the commodity basket today, crude oil is up 83 cents. That's a little over 1%, trading 63.60 last. When crude inventory numbers came in yesterday, there was a huge miss. Right, Michael? Do you recall what those numbers were? No, he's on the phone, I guess. All right. Gold is down again today, but it's only $1.89. So last trade went off at 13 30 80 And hang on. My co-host is texting me. Just Okay. All right. Now, let's go to the Asian markets. Everything's green here in the US of A, with the exception of gold. All right, and in Asia, the color of the day remains. The Nikkei finished up 156 points. That's three quarters of 1%. Shanghai was up 20 points. That's a little over half of 1%. And the Hang Seng added 301 points today. That's just shy of 1%. So we got green, green, and let's go to Europe where the color of the day. Ooh, were it not for the FTSE, it would be green too. So of all the indices, we have one in the red today. That is the FTSE, down just eight points. The DAX, on the other hand, was up 22 points at the close, and the CAC was up eight. So some pretty quiet trade in the European markets. The Asian markets uh, were humming, 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 humming. And in the US, the march continues, right? Just keep moving on up. All right. <clears throat> this up. Now, <clears throat> you can go out on Google and you can do a Google search for CFRN weekly trading zones. You'll come back, I think, with about two pages of articles that I've written since 2009, kind of explaining the zones, uh, not how to create them, but how to trade them, how to observe them, how to utilize them. You can use them for a number of different things. Read those articles, and then at the top of one of the search pages, if you click the Images tab, Google has been so kind as to archive a lot of our charts going all the way back to 2009. Of course, we have those charts on our blog as well. And what's so interesting is that price does today exactly what it was doing in 2009. I looked back a little further. I got a hold of some historical data. Guess what? In 1999, it was doing the same thing. 89? <laughs> I could go on, but I won't. So anyway, <clears throat> the Globex Sunday night Globex Open was right here. We had a Monday holiday and holiday trade Monday. You know, the markets were open to noon, but it's just always kind of weird. And we recommend you stay away from it. Price got below the zone and it did what price does. It 
went to the zone below. Whenever price consolidates in a zone, once it breaks out of the consolidation, we expect it to go to the zone overhead or the zone below. Now, there will be times when it comes a little short. Weekly trading zones are a bit like FIB numbers. They're an area, okay? Now, we get used to, those of us who, you know, been at this for a while, when it turns on a dime like that and like that, that can happen so many times that we forget this can happen. We came two points shy of touching the zone. Now from 23, 27, 23 up to 27, 37, Michael told me last night that was 14 points. 14 S&P points. Hmm. That's $700 per contract at $50 per point. $700. Now, if you've earned the right to trade 10 contracts, not just because you have money in an account, but you've actually earned the right to trade 10 the way we teach it, that could be a $7,000 trade. Okay. Just saying. What did price do? Rally back up, back down to the zone. It tried again, put in a slightly lower high. And then as it came back down, it ran into... Uh, or it spiked this zone, got back above, 14 up, and 14 back down, and another overshoot. Now this overshoot without hitting the zone below is a little bit unusual. If you go back and look at historical charts, you'll see what I what I mean. Michael, I'm going to pass it to you here in just a second. Uh, <clears throat> okay. And then we hit this zone here, 37.38. Okay, that was another... Uh, 14 back up, and then 14 back down, and then the market sold off uh, with some fervor. Right back up to that same 22, 23 area, and then back down to 26, 98. Now that particular zone, that's 22, that's 24 points up and 24 points back down. This morning, in the live training room, just as the market was getting... Now, we trade around the clock, but as Wall Street was waking up and they were ringing the bell, <clears throat> price was, oh, I think, right, right about here. Okay. Or, no, it was, it was below that. Anyhow, this is what I told the guys in the live training room this morning. <clears throat> we don't know which way the market's going to break. It's tried all night to get above this zone and it did briefly spike above and they got knocked right back down tried again got knocked back down it actually tried again there and got knocked down it actually tried there and got knocked down you have to understand at one point this was a green candle but it ended a red candle this was a green candle but it ended a doji so it just keeps getting slapped down slapped down but the buyers man Look at this. They finally punched it through. Now, where's the real test? Look left. When you're teaching your children to cross the street, you got to look both ways. When you're trading, you only have to look left. Now, I gave them two scenarios this morning because price was down here. I said, if the market goes into a decline, we have to wait to 2709. We'll sell 2709 on a stop and we'll ride it down to this zone and we'll put our target about a point above, even two points if you want. But you don't take yourself out, you let the market take you out. When you get down to that target area, you just get your stop up real tight and let it come back and nip you. Sometimes it won't come back and nip you, sometimes it'll take off and actually go in the direction of your trade, and that's a that's a freebie, okay? Now, <clears throat> we did say that because of this little doji here, that we could not trade until we got below that, but then we look over here, and there's another wall. The buyers, they're willing to pay this price, they're willing to pay this price. So as this came down, I. I came back into the room and I said, hey guys, we're selling off again. 
We haven't triggered yet at 2709. Just want you to be prepared in case we do. But what happened, what we thought could happen, turned around, it did punch through 23. Now, the long trade that I gave them was to consider being long at 27.32 up to 27.36. That is a nice four-point trade, okay? Is it gonna happen? Don't know. Apparently, the buyers camped out here and here. I'm gonna guess that these guys came in early, right? Why? Why would they do that? Well, look at the nice ride they had down from 27, 30 something, all the way down to 26, 98, 30 S&P points. Yeah, that's, that's nice. So they want to do it again. Okay, but there's always the fear of missing out. FOMO. They come in early and that's exactly what they did. The question, this zone was resistance 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 will it now become support if it does we will look to buy 27.32 on a stop with our target up one point shy of the zone but we won't take ourselves out we'll trail real tight and let the market take us out okay so those of you that were in the training room today you heard that, you saw that, and these are the kinds of things, along with the rules-based trading that we teach you in the live training room, that needs to be the <clears throat> foundation of your trading business. Learning a high probability, low risk, aggressive risk management trading methodology that is simple, not easy, but simple, and it has a, a reason for everything. You're never at a loss. Oh God, I don't know what to do. No, with our method, you always know if you should be long, if you should be short, at exactly what price, or if you should be out of the market for the moment. No, no position is a position, okay? All right, so we'll continue to watch this. Michael's popping in right now, taking over the screens. He's going to give us a recap of what happened in the live training room today and boy we had a we almost maxed out i kept waiting for that thing to flash and say we couldn't hold anybody else but it was nice to see so many of you come out i encourage you if you've not taken the trial michael's going to tell you how to do that and if you've never had a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with me i will type into the chat box the address where you can go and you can sign up for a 45 minute session with me in conjunction with your free trial. There's no cost. We provide the platform, the indicators, the method, all of it, okay? Michael, it's yours. Okay, uh, let me just... Um, or do you need more time? I, well, you need I more just time, I got the, stuff. Uh, no, I, I got it, I got okay. it. I just gotta, I just gotta paste this link right here. Oh, I know what... Paste. That I, is the new one. I know what they need. This is what they need. They can't hear the music, which is a shame, but they can see the pretty pictures. Buddy, it's all yours. I'll hit mute and be here when you're done. Excellent. Thank you. All right, everyone. Here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the 23rd day. 23rd day of February 2018. Um, let's see. Today, well, first, if you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the home page here at CFRN.net. Right up here at the top, it says sign up for the CFRN Live Training Room, 100% free trials, user indicator, learn our strategy, click here. When you click there, you will be brought to this page right here. All right, on this page, all we ask for is your email, your first name, how you found us. You hit the submit button.
and then you will be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click the confirmation link, well then you don't get a free trial. Okay, you must click on the confirmation link. All right, because we don't know you took the trial until you click that confirmation link. All right, now I think it's this one. Yes, today, if you're gonna read the spreadsheet, you can read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Um, today is the 23rd day of February, as I just said. Uh, we made 16 ticks on the Euro, four ticks in crude, and two ticks on the ES. That put us at 165 on the morning, plus 165. Now, today, it took 35 minutes and four trade opportunities to get to the goal for the day. At that time, we were plus $125. And we took a total of seven trades. Now, this is one contract. Okay, Dwayne was talking earlier about working your way up to 10. This is one contract, two hours per day. On the month now, $4,226. That's over 15 days, averaging $281 a day. On the year, $6,745. That's over 34 days, averaging $198 per day. That's one contract. Now, now if you want to make $500 a day, well, I, you, know, you just got to add, add contracts. Okay. Um, all right. So that's the spreadsheet. And I told you how to get our free trial. Now let's go through what actually happened here. We only had one opportunity. Well, I missed this one here on gold. Um, and it looks like right here at the open, I didn't like this because, I mean, I know it looks okay now, but um, at the open when that was in real time, the cycle was flat right in the middle there. That's why we didn't take that. We didn't like that. I didn't like that. Um, it ended up working out just fine. But the next opportunity was right here, a bounce off the BBC. I missed that one. I didn't get filled on it. Um, and we took a break even right there. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then it just got really messy in here. Uh, well, there's a bounce off the BBC right here that you could have done right there. You'd still be in it right now. Okay, that was the gold. Um, on the Euro, we had... All right, started out right in here on the euro. We got six ticks profit on this first trade right here. Then we had a break even. Then we got 10 ticks profit on this one. That put us at plus 16. We missed out on that one and that one and that one. All three of those that we missed right there were winning trades. Um, and we had a break even right here. Okay, there was another one right here that would have been a break even, and we missed that. And then it just got really choppy right through here. Okay, and it's really choppy again right now. Okay, that was a 6E. We we're a plus 16 on the 6E. Um, crude oil. We really only had the one trade opportunity right here on crude. Um, and we got four ticks profit on that. Okay, during the break, there was another one right here during the break that would have been a break even probably. Um, and that's really all we had. Yeah, the markets just weren't giving it up for us today. On the ES. Okay, you see there was a weekly trading zone right there. Okay, um, the ES started out by not giving any opportunity there. Then we took two ticks profit on this move right here. Um, then it got really choppy. There was a shorting opportunity here that would have been a break even. We had to break this dynamic resistance, but once we did, we were too close to the zone to trade on the upside. Then it got into the zone, and then all this is during the break. Okay, it's too close to the zone to short right now. Um, yeah, there was just nothing there on the ES. We only got uh, two ticks profit on the ES today. Okay, and... That's it for the morning. Um, all right, so today is the 23rd day of February, 2018. Um, we made 16 ticks. Um, sorry, we made 16, 16 ticks in the uh, Euro. We made four ticks in crude and two ticks on the ES. That put us at plus $165. Um, 
Today it took 35 minutes and four trades to get to the goal of 100. Well, to get to the goal for the day, but uh, we were at 125 at that point. Um, and we took a total of seven trade opportunities. So on the month, we're at $4,226. That's over 15 days, averaging $281 per day. And on the year, we're at 6745 That's over 34 days, averaging $198 per day. Okay, 198 per day. Um, all right. If you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the homepage here at CFRN.net. Right up here at the top, it says sign up for the CFRN live training room. 100% free trial user indicators on our strategy. Click here. When you click there, you'll be brought to this page. On this page, put in your email, put in your first name, and how you found us. Hit the submit button, and you'll be sent a confirmation link. Okay? You must click on that confirmation link. All right? You must click on that confirmation link. If you don't click the confirmation link, we don't know that you took the free trial. Okay? It's as simple as that. Um, all right. And with that, we can pass it back out to Studio A in fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. You know what? I've been meaning to do this. I've been meaning to do this. Spelled it wrong. South Mountain State Park. Oh, that's in North Carolina. No, South Mountain State Park. Arizona. There. See that? That's what Studio A is overlooking. Scorpion Gulch, South Mountain. All right, Dwayne, you can take it back if you're ready. Look at that, a golf course. You texted me that you're on with. Oh. Yeah. Yakety yak. Yeah, I can. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Let me bring that picture back up. So, yeah, this is South Mountain. Isn't that beautiful? Some pretty pictures. Dwayne did text me. Just random rock outcroppings. There was this one, when I was in Idaho, there was this one random place. It was on the way to uh, Anderson Dam. Um, and it just had, like, in the middle of nothing. It was, you know, it was in the desert. Sort of like, sort of like, like this. Okay, it was in a desert, sort of like that, but there was just this one random rock that was, I don't, I don't know how big it was. It was probably about 30 feet high. And just randomly deposited. It's kind of strange. But I imagine the glaciers deposited it there. All right. Well, let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the markets here. Um, Benito Edward. Sup, sport. Um, okay. He hates it when I call him sport. Sport. I hate it more when you call me Mikey. Yeah, I try not to do that because I know that really does disturb you. Yes. Throw me off my game. <laughs> well, at least you have a game. Yeah, let me check this. Make sure that I go to that link. Darn it. Okay, 
I'm glad I didn't send that out. What are you trying to do? Oh, I created the link for next week already, and I... Did you make the password in the other place? I did. Yep. I got to show you, there's another step you don't really know about. You know how people get the instant email when they sign up? You have to go to yeah. Weber, put the link and the password in there. I'll show you someday. Oh, okay. I'll show you someday. Yeah. Okay. Show me someday. Yeah. Show me someday. Because <laughs> I don't do that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I do always go in and do it. Uh, okay. This guy, this Russian guy, if you haven't read about it, he tokenized himself. Uh, I don't really know how to explain to you what that means because I haven't read the article. Russian entrepreneur in the food retail space, Boris, has already launched one cryptocurrency. Now he plans to tokenize himself. Hmm. Uh, you can read about that at Crypto Daily Info. Dot com. Uh, Bitcoin latest. The government, the UK government, denies that it's about to launch its own digital currency. Okay. Now, I, I'm here to tell you guys, uh, those, the, the article I read you yesterday sent chills down my spine. I, I actually said, shiver me timbers in my head. I didn't say it out loud because I would, you know silly but they are having discussions the SEC is discussing what kind of regulations they want to put in place you know to protect investors and you know just to make the whole thing kosher now if you know anything about the SEC the DTC and the Federal Reserve um, it's either the three stooges or give me the names of three bank robbers Willie Banks is the only one I can think of but when they said that the Federal Reserve was in the discussion, like they had a meeting where congressmen and the SEC and the Federal Reserve sat down to discuss how they should go about regulating, why is the, why is the Federal Reserve there? They're as much a part of the government as Federal Express. Now, I know that most of you in this audience already know that, but there might be a new person who doesn't. I mean, most Americans go, Federal Reserve, well, yeah, of course it's the government. No, not even close. You really, if you don't know that, uh, Google up, what's it called? Is it the, the, it's not the monster from Jekyll Island. One of you guys in the chat room, help me out. What's the name of that book? Jekyll, Jekyll it's Island. It's a historical, factual account of how the Federal Reserve came to be. Now, uh... Thomas Jefferson warned us back when he was signing the Declaration of Independence. Whatever you do, people, he was speaking to the generations to come. Never allow a central bank to be created. It will destroy the nation. See, the Federal Reserve prints our money and loans it to us at interest. Why? So some really old white guys can get very, very richer that's the only reason. There, there, there is no other reason. So, if you don't know the story, I'm not going to go into it today, but you really, really need to know. Okay? Federal Reserve is not your friend. You know what? I've gotten a lot of news articles up, but I'm not going to get them all up because i got to do this radio show. But I thought I would try. Good Lord, there's a lot of news today. Wow. Okay. But that's not the news I want to give you. Here's the news I want to give you. If you participated in the pre-sale for the CT Global token, all right, one of our team members who happens to be, who happens to live in Venezuela, he's working right now Working in fingers of the bone, as they say. Uh, where was I? A creature, uh, creature from Jekyll Island. He's working Jekyll his Island. fingers to the bone. He's working yeah. his fingers to the bone. Yeah, not the creature, but our team member, our software engineer. Yes. Somebody yes. the other day, they emailed me back after I sent out that email, and they go, well, 
what's what's one of your team members doing in in Venezuela? He lives there. That's just the answer. Uh, so anyway, he's doing some work. Your tokens that you purchased in the presale have been transferred, but we still have to do. We have to finish a verification test. But if you go to, you ready for this? Write it down. Okay. Go to EtherScan, E T H E R S C A N dot I O. Here, I'll I'll paste it in here for everybody. Oh, why don't you bring up a browser and show them? It's it's right here. Boom. EtherScan dot I O. Yeah. Now what you do is you put your wallet address in here. It, although you can't see the tokens in your wallet just yet, because you got to flip a switch. And I think I'm going to do a webinar this afternoon about 5 Eastern and explain it. If you show up, fine. If you don't, fine. Because I'll record it, of course, and then I'll post it to all the regular places. If you put your wallet address in here and hit search or go, it will right show here. you the balance. It will show you how many right. tokens are in your wallet. Now, if for some reason that number doesn't match your records. In fact, we had an email this morning, Michael. Did you see that one uh, from Bob? Bob A? Uh, I, he, I saw one, but I don't remember okay. who it was from. He bought some for himself. He bought some for his kids. Yeah. Yep. And, yep. Okay. and I, okay. I separated the kids out. I got separate, um, separate okay. addresses for each kid. Okay. So by doing that, you'll be able to see your tokens in the wallet. If there's any discrepancy in the amount or something, you can let us know. Then this afternoon, right, I'm just going to carve it in stone right now. At 5 p.m. Eastern, the Wayne is going to do a very short webinar. Uh, there will be no password. You'll get the link by going to emini.cfrn.net. Okay. So about now. 4.45 Eastern, go to emini.cfrn.net cfrn.net and if the webinar is on it's going to be very short there'll be right at the top of the page there'll be a post with a link all you got to do is click and you're in go ahead okay so what what you have to do up at the top of the page here is a search a search box mm -hmm. you take your address and put it in that search box you see i just did it here and then you click on token transfers and you can see 10,000 tokens were transferred in to this address from our, from our wallet to your wallet, okay? For whoever th this is, um, from you click on to yours. token transfers from to in. You should have the in there. And that, that verification that we were waiting for last night, Dwayne, actually finished. I just went and looked at that, too. Oh, good. So remember, then that should make he our... did that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. he did everything on my computer last right. night, remember? That's right. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. it's... What are you doing right after the show today? Uh, Jake and I are going somewhere. Okay. But uh, I got, yeah, yeah, we're going to be gone by 2 o'clock. Um, well, I think we're going to be, we'll probably be done. But, well, I'll just figure it out. Uh, but if it's on your computer, but but I should still have access to the wallet, even though it's on your computer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you, have, you have access to the wallet. Now, guys, we're going to, yeah. next week, I'm going to be teaching you about something called MetaMask. M-E-T-A-M-A-S-K. It is a Chrome browser extension. And it it increases the security when you're going yep. to myetherwallet.com or any of the exchanges. It's... Uh, you want to get it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. Here. I, I'm going to send something to you, Dwayne. I'll send you our wallet address. Okay, I don't know if you have it, but then you can do anything you need to do. Yeah. Because I'm I'm looking right now at the transfers. Okay. Um, I just, you know, in the in the search box up there, I put our ours in there, and we have all these transactions and token mm -hmm. transfers. Now let me say this: about fifty percent of you who participated in the presale have you still haven't sent us your wallet address. If it's I mean, we made a couple of videos how to get a wallet, but maybe, you know, I don't know, it, it didn't click. So if you want me to log in with you and walk you through the steps, I will. I'd rather not have to, but 
I'd be happy to. If you watch the video, go to uh, youtube.com slash CFRN. Go to February 1st, and you'll see a very short 30-minute video that walks you through every step. I'm also going to be making a video, hopefully over the weekend, that shows you how to transfer from your digital wallet to your hardware wallet. Okay, Very simple process. I mean, you could go... Oh, I was going to show you this, Mike. Uh, since I can't uh, post all the news right now, this is this this qualifies as news. Give me a second to get locked down. Okay, okay. I just sent you an email. Okay. Okay, stand by. Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to take the charts at this point. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. I guess I still have the charts too, but that was okay because I got to show people stuff. Yes, thank you. Okay. And okay. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. Show and tell. Guys, if you're going to buy the Ledger Nano S, you can buy from us. <clears throat> and yes, we will earn a small commission if you click this link to purchase your Ledger Nano S. However, they can't ship, the, the factory is in in France, and they can't ship till the 1st of March. But they, they say they're gonna fly out of there so quick. So if you want the Ledger Nano S, now you can buy it on Amazon, but the same thing is gonna run you. Because they know the manufacturer is back ordered. People on Amazon are getting 130, 140, 150 bucks for one. So, on that video, I'll show you how to create a vault, and so you can have an online wallet and you can have an online vault. Now, once you put stuff in the vault, it takes 48 hours to get it out. That, that's a safety and a security measure. But as a long-term investor, that's not an issue to you. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that. Maybe even in today's show, we'll go over it. it's a piece of cake. So if you click this, the Ledger Nano S, that's 79 euro, okay, and that translates into how many dollars, Mike? Uh, 79 euro. 79 euro. Do you have to do a conversion? I'm not sure what the euro is to the so dollar. You just, you just type it in. It is 97 dollars and 19 cents at the moment. See it on my screen? I hang on. You yes, I do not... see it on your screen. Oh, yeah, you know, you're just, now you're just making stuff no, up. No, I do see it on your screen. Now, 79 euros. Okay, all right, and now you see this, guys? I haven't really had a chance to experiment with this and do all that I want to do, but I know that it does all that we want it to do. Okay, except I got to move it down. I don't want it to pop up to the top like that. And we can, you can do like video you can break off from the main chat and do like video chats to grandma, you know, just like Skype. Uh, QR code for mobile chat. What is this guy? Log out of the chat. Pause the problematic scrolling of the conversation. That's when a lot of people are talking. And you can. That's not it. I think I can't get up that far because my guy, where's my guy? Uh, dog on. There's a little thing at the top. I really want to show you that. I don't want to log out. Can you expand it? Well, you know, Mike. There you go. Now I remember why I fell so hard for you. Uh, <laughs> Simple uh, things. Okay, now where the, where the heck did the thing go? I know I did this the other night. Help me, Mike. There's a place where you pop it out. Do you mean you make the window... 
total. Okay, John's ready to come on. Let me open his mic. Mm. Okay. Right. Maybe you can figure it out. <laughs> uh, maybe. All right, I can open his mic. I got his mic. Hey, John, welcome to the show. Glad to have you with us. All right, uh... Guys, I can't get up here, but I think right up in the corner, because I've got this go-to thing. Let me go to let me go to my other window. Maybe I can pop it out over there. <sighs> Did he leave that button out? No. I hear John coughing. Hey John, welcome to the show. Okay, you can do this, which is not what I wanted to do. But you see how I popped the ch you can pop the chat out without putting it in a separate window. But I guess that's the same thing. Then you can shrink it, right? And you can drag it from monitor to monitor to monitor. If you add another, if I add another monitor that way. See, I'm dragging it all around. Now, what's really cool about this particular chat, aside from all the other things that I mentioned, is if you happen to be on the new site and your buddy happens to be over on our Crypto World Radio site, where we have all the hot crypto podcasts from around the world, you guys can talk to each other because it's a network, a family of sites. Yes. Uh, I'm telling you, it's cutting edge. It's cutting edge. Uh, all right. Enough of that. I'll stop patting myself in the back and just move on. It's probably the proper thing to do, right, Mike? It's time. Yeah, it's time. John. <laughs> Are you there, brother? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to get uh, this uh, breaking news. Yeah. Oh, t tell us. What's the breaking news? Well, the, <clears throat> the metals are starting to run here. And as you know, we've been kind of stalking the nugget, trying to get the best entry point, which we more or less did yesterday near the lows. And it came down and tested the lows this morning, but which is a little bit nerve-wracking. But it turned, and uh, the dollar is actually breaking down right now, which is another good thing. And the metals, after really trying to, you know, a lot of messing around this morning, they're finally starting to to go to the upside. Uh, this is very, very good. The silver hasn't really confirmed it yet, which is bothering me a little bit. But uh, the nugget, <clears throat> the nugget, look, we're not out of the woods on these metals by any means, uh, but they're definitely acting better. And um, is, is this this is could this could be the the beginning of something pretty big here. So. Now, uh, before I forget, uh, on the Maxim, we actually put a stop on this thing this morning. It, it, it opened higher, it gapped higher, and it was up uh, almost a dollar a share at one point, or you know, it was up a good bit from yesterday's lows. And then you know, the market had a bit of a heart attack uh, sell-off, and, and uh, for some reason they whacked this Maxim down, but it came down to... Um, 60.55 or so. We put a rebuy on it right about here at at 61. I, I you know I could have I could have gone in and just tried to catch the falling knife, which I probably should have done, but um, uh, it was a little bit scary. But what I'm encouraged about is look when when a thing opens higher, when a stock opens higher, there's something usually <laughs> there's usually something behind it, even if you don't know what it is. And, uh, you know, it, it's not unusual sometimes for stocks to do crazy things like come down and test previous low, which is what happened with Maxim this morning. Um, when the stock starts getting volatile, it usually means there's something pretty big brewing. Uh, so what the good news is this, if, if, if we sort of close up around 61 and an 8 or 62 today above the, today's highs, you know, I would definitely go home long this stock because... Uh, uh, the test is in, you know, and that, that's the whole point of what I was saying about this market <clears throat> in the last, you know, yesterday. The test was in on this market uh, on the night, you know, after that crashing, crash kind of low we had. What's on, the symbol? Uh, sorry, MXIM. MXIM, okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, the, uh, the, the, the S&P 500 and the and NASDAQ, you know, they had this sell-off uh, during, you know, late sell-off um, on Wednesday, right after the news came out, and they've been in a rally mode since. And I actually, as I was saying yesterday, you know, it looks like we're going to close uh, Friday fairly strongly, uh, which would be very, very good. Now, 
it's I uh, wouldn't you know this market's sort of jittery it's uh, it's it's uh, bothering me especially because of the way they knocked this uh, maxim down you know the semiconductors are strong they're not they're not on fire but they're strong the nasdaq has been strong but we, you know we put in a seller up, up around this level for the time being the got to be a little bit careful of the vix here we got to buy on the vix uh, just above the market um the you know there's always a chance we could have another sell-off this afternoon that wouldn't be good if that happens and also nvidia is not acting very well which is really bothering me as well so and some of the fangs you know we had facebook uh, run up in the morning and it's kind of gotten weak since and even twitter and a few other things so uh it, you know there's no no guarantees with this market at all it's really uh, you know you've seen this how quickly things can turn negative and that could be the uh, that could be the the story now and 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 the, you know as i said yesterday the gold doesn't seem to like it when the market um, you know gets uh, gets uh, jittery uh, it seems to dampen it immediately and that's you know we, we i mean we're not going anywhere so we're still down slightly on the day with the gold but the the, the nugget is up and uh, that's that's kind of a good thing because we haven't seen that before but uh, I would be careful of this. Uh, you know, it, it, we've kind of put in a secondary high here on the nugget right now, so we've really got to take that out above it at 24.40 to to uh, confirm there's some sort of move brewing in the metals. <clears throat> now the platinum uh, came down and tested and uh, went up. We've got a buy signal at 9.94. It's at 9.99, so that's a good thing. Obviously, getting over a thousand will be a big deal. Um, Palladium is also came down to one oh two nine. Sorry, we got a buy signal one oh two nine. It's one oh four oh right now. It's it's certainly leading the way <clears throat> for the metals. The copper also is kind of coming back after testing the you know, the three twenty area. Uh, the grains are are even though they're very volatile right now, they're they're kind of building value at the highs of the range uh, except for the corn and wheat which are a little bit lower but they've been acting better today the the wheat sorry the the, the soybeans you know I'd, I'd pretty much i'd almost go home long these grains uh as long as they close above current levels and the higher the strong the higher the better because we're we're at the point of breaking through uh contract highs on the soybeans we, you, you know, without almost stealthily, we, we've gone from a thousand, which we broke through recently, you know, a week or two ago, to a thousand and fifty already. So these beans are very, very potent, very powerful. Uh, the uh, oats are starting to go back up, which is a good sign too. The cocoa, I told you, that I didn't even put a stop in it. I'm just staying long, and it just broke through twenty two hundred. It's a really strong market. Coffee. Uh, it did run up to 122.7 this morning. It's coming off a bit again. I, 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 you know, the coffee could, if it were to turn around here, I'd be inclined to stay with it. But I, I put a stop at probably 121 here, and only rebuy probably 122. <clears throat> the cotton is also acting like it's starting another run to the upside. Um, and uh, you know, in spite of this little pullback in the market a short while ago, we are holding in. And the more we hold in here, we're really not pulling back today too much, actually, <clears throat> which I think is encouraging. So, if we, you know, if we sort of go anywhere out near the highs of today, it just it almost couldn't be better. It certainly sets us up for uh, possibly higher Sunday Sunday night and a continuation next week. However, uh, come you know, come Tuesday possibly could be a problem day. Late Monday afternoon would be a be a day to watch carefully, if we get for weakness. But if we get through Monday afternoon and into Tuesday, possibly the rest of the week could be pretty firm. And you know, here's the point: <clears throat> we've had a you know one of the greatest ups, upside weeks of all time, possibly the the biggest ever. Uh, we've got we've been going sideways all this week and most of this week and we're just starting to to kind of break out <clears throat> here to the upside uh but you have to be very very careful 
with for all of these things because uh, we're coming up against that that sell point of uh, several days ago <clears throat> you know the wednesday sell point this wednesday high and you know that's a that's a kind of a hard move down this is a soft rally and the next move is uh, could be could be kind of dangerous so we have to be ready for that and um the VIX uh, is still in this uh, 40 to 44 range, uh, and is although it's breaking down today, <clears throat> and and it is sort of you know if the VIX breaks below 40 next week or 41 even starts breaking the 40, I think that just almost uh, is an insurance policy on a higher market. <clears throat> so. Um, and and now the look the problem with is with the metals is the silver just can't uh, can't get out of it you know it just can't get going and it actually opened down a little bit this morning <clears throat> uh, and so did the USLV so that's something to be ca very careful of <clears throat> so um, I probably actually would sell the nugget right here right now and and probably buy the dust just to uh, just in case and I'd, I'd only switch that position if. Uh, if uh, if the nugget starts getting strong again because uh, it it's even though we sort of broken a trend line it could just be a false rally <clears throat> and uh the uh, the dusts you know are, can be very dramatic at times but like it uh, could possibly happen later today so I, I'd, I'd keep that in, in mind you know just i don't know the metals can't go up with the market or without the market you know the market's down the metals are kind of being weak you know, we, I mean, we had a screamer of a move a few days ago, and it looked like it was going to restart today. That's kind of what I'm betting on, you know, a kind of a restart of that big up move. But it's just not, we're just not there yet. Uh, you know, we've got most of the supporting <clears throat> factors to help a move in gold, but it's not helping. You know, I mean, in other words, the grains, the grains <clears throat> being so strong, uh, they're just not moving, moving the needle on the gold just yet. <clears throat> so... We have to be mindful of that. Uh, the 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 but and also the energy market has <clears throat> gone up just like we said it would yesterday. I said to keep buying new highs in the energy, and uh, that's worked out pretty well so far. So uh, and now the market's coming coming uh, weak again. So you know it's just uh, it's a it's a it's you got I think you got to be really really careful here now because if we <clears throat> if we do sell off here today. Uh, it's not going to be pretty. Um, so that's uh, kind of a wrap on, 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 on what I think today. And I look at this okay, Facebook, John, you know. Uh, I'm looking at uh, this crude coming off right now. Exactly. Yeah, I'd right. sell, sell the crude right here. I'd just sell the, it. I'd, I'd, the email yeah. we sent out last night said to, <laughs> on crude, to buy 63.20 if the opportunity presented itself. And it certainly did. Uh, the swing high, 63, 73. We'll call it 70. So that's that's a $500 per contract move. Keep in mind, guys, we never get out at the swing high or swing low. And the reason is we trail our stop. $500 per contract available. Now, speaking of stops, would you put your stop here to take this trade? Nope. Would you put your stop here to take this trade? I would. So, on the sell side of crude, we were looking, yeah, we kind of got, we're slightly damaged goods based on the short side, 62.45. Kind of wanted to stay out of the short side of it, but it made it down to 62. There's a hundred bucks in it, so... Worst things could happen. Okay, so that's the crude. You've already covered the gold. Was you, do you have any thoughts on the S&P? Did you? Or what are the NQ? This thing is well, uh, yeah, they're, they're acting great. Uh, the look Dow. At these, is... Look at these days, John. We had a thousand dollar per contract here, fifteen hundred per contract here, a thousand mm -hmm. per contract here, and I haven't looked to see what happened today. Uh, last night's email said to consider buying sixty-eight ten. And so that would be right about here. And important prices in important areas are almost always tested. You guys know that. So buying 68.10. 
uh, it ran up to like 27 so that's like 17 that's a $300 per contract move that's about a $400 per contract move and this one <coughs> excuse me and the NQ 6810 up to 68 what is that 45 yeah so that's a $700 per contract move from here to here but again we trail a stop so as price comes back we let the market take us out the reason we don't take ourselves out is because you have no way of knowing if that thing you know the second you take yourself out it could take off like a rocket so just get your stop up real tight behind it and let the market take you out this way you always leave the door open for additional profitability in the trade <coughs> without much risk okay Uh, Mike had a comment. Uh, he said, uh, "Strange how after great write-up on Santa Fe that it pulled back again." You know, there's, there's. I haven't watched the volume lately. There's always the buy the rumor, sell the news thing, and you know, there's also people who've been in a while, and so on something good like that, some buying pressure comes in, which allows those with weak hands to get out. And you know what? We don't want any weak hands in Santa Fe, so. But we're yeah, nice about think, it. Uh, we, we shake I their think, hand uh, on their way out the door and give them a hearty pat on the back and an attaboy. So. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> uh, next week uh, we'll we'll see some uh, could could see some upside in Santa Fe. The uh, you know there's been so, there's some pretty strong buyers that are looking at it right now. So uh, we'll see what happens. But um, the you know look the stock ran up pretty quick up to 19. It's pulled back a little bit. But it's technically looking very good, and it's pulled back on low volume, which is fine. So um, the uh, you know uh, you, you could get uh, a very strong impulse move to the upside. Look, don't forget, there's um, <clears throat> the queue is coming out any day. I think the queue is going to be well received, uh, and uh, so will the end of year report. Um, that's going to sort of start to wake people up to what's really going on with Santa Fe. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens when that comes out. Okay. Very good. And well, I'll talk about that yeah, offline. Uh, yeah, you know what's been going on here today? The, 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 the market sort of keeps having these kind of, it comes, sort of goes to the brink and it looks like it's going to fall over and then it keeps coming back. But now it's, it's looking a little bit uh, uh, harder to do that, but um, we definitely have to be uh, careful of the next few days in the market. That's uh, that's because even though it looking it you know look it's remember it, we had this massive move up. We've had a pullback, you know, kind of a sideways to down consolidation, and we're breaking up out of that consolidation at the moment. But with uh, you know uh, methodically, but at the same time, kind of uh, uh, lethargically at the same time, I guess. Uh, and um, if something happens out of the blue that causes the market to break uh, strongly, like uh, forty or fifty points on the Nasdaq, you know, if we basically, I mean, we're not up that much. If we suddenly went negative today, that would be that would be pretty bad. So that's uh, that's important to keep that in mind. <coughs> okay, John. Well, if that's, if okay, that's okay. it for you, sir, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you this afternoon or over the weekend. And then, of course, we'll see you back here on uh, on Monday. Thanks a lot. Appreciate right. it. Have thank a great so weekend. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Let me close this mic out. Okay. I just put into the chat box. Webinar today at 5 p.m. Eastern, tentative. Check here, emini.cfrn.net at 4.30 p.m. Eastern for the link to the webinar at 5 or any additional updates. Like maybe we got to push it to 6. I don't know. Hopefully not. Hopefully we'll get it all taken care of. Now. There we go. Yes, I think we've already covered that. 
Last night's email said to consider being long, 27.25. We didn't get the huge moves like we had earlier in the week, but hey, two and three quarter points. That'll do the trick. And then four and three quarter points. Again, you have to, on the 30 minute chart, if you can't get a $300 stop loss, and you've all, all of you that receive the alerts, I've taught you, you know, what you got to do, what you got to look for. You go to a smaller time frame. If the smaller time frame still doesn't give you your entry, go to the four tick range. See if the indicator set and our methodology that we use there as you're crossing may give you the entry. Okay. Would we put a stop here? No way. At $50 a point, the most you can rest on the S&P would be six points. That puts you at that $300 threshold. Now, just because my threshold is three, maybe yours is 3,000. I don't know. Depends on the size of your account, how much experience you have in the markets. I just know that if I have to risk more than 300 per contract, if I just wait a little bit, something higher probability lower risk will come along because you've got eight markets two trades per market and because important prices in important areas are almost always tested you could easily see 30 to 40 triggers over the course of a day and you only want to trade the one that gives you the lowest risk with the highest profit potential all right a good word for the day Strengthen your faith. Part one of a mini series. We all know that faith is not what we believe. Faith is what we do with what we believe. Meditate on that over the weekend. Hebrews eleven two, through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. The Bible says faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. Hebrews 11, 1 through 2. The heroes of faith listed in Hebrews chapter 11 were far from perfect. Noah believed God, built the ark, and saved his family. But when he came out of the ark, he got drunk. Abraham was known as a friend of God, yet he lied to save his own neck and ended up compromising his wife's safety. When God told Sarah she'd give birth to a child at 90 years old, she laughed. I would have probably done the same. And how about Joseph? He was a slave with a prison record who ended up second in command when it came to ruling Egypt. Then there's Rahab the harlot. I mean, we wouldn't even let her sing in the church choir. Yet God listed her as a woman of great faith. And how about Jacob, who duped his brother and deceived his father-in-law in business in order to enrich himself? Would you do business with that guy? Then there was King David, whose womanizing led to murder and national scandal. Even Gideon and Samuel, two spiritual giants, raised children who went astray spiritually. Every one of these people was as human as you are and as human as I am. They faltered, fumbled the ball, and went through times of failure. Their only claim to fame is that they believed God and He honored their faith. Guess what? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever so what he did for them then, he'll do the same for you each time you put your trust in him, not in the things of this world. That's our good word for the day. The Dow, we had a little bit of upside, no short trigger. Uh, the Russell, didn't even get a chance to look at the Russell. Let's see. We were looking to buy 1546 if we could, and we were looking to sell 1526 if we could. So 
Had a lot of nothing going on with the Russell. NQ, we just covered 300, 400, 700. Gold, uh, we have it just far enough in each direction to get stopped out. That's two days in a row. Bonds, we said to consider buying 143.03 in last night's email. That's going to be right here. And now at 144.03, swing high, 144.03, that is exactly to the tick. 1000 dollars per contract available. One point in the 30-year bonds. It's 32 ticks to a point, 3125 per tick, thousand bucks. Okay. And soybeans, let's see. Consider buying 1040. We haven't got there, I guess. And 10 and a nope. Triggers. That's two days in a row that we didn't trigger on soybeans. Okay, let me drag this up. Dwayne, how do you get the WTZ value numbers posted on that line? Okay, great question. Drop a horizontal line. Double click it. Come down here and tell that you want custom text, current value. What size you want it what you want the custom text to say then save as default close it and then every time you drop a horizontal line it'll look like this so you sacrifice being able to use the typical horizontal line to create this just double click it and out comes the property box okay all right guys as you know i've got much work to do so i got to get after it uh, do this check emini.cfrn.net at 4.30. You'll either find a link to the 5 o'clock webinar or some additional update. Okay? But you can go verify your coins uh, in your my Ether wallet right now and then everything will be fully functional, God willing, by this afternoon. Now, it is the weekend, so CFRN law states you must spend some quality time with your family, okay? I'll see you in church on Sunday. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with His mercy and with His grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decision.